Hey, beautiful souls. For those of you watching on the replay or watching live, I am Joy Giovanni, Joyful Medium, here with our weekly live chat, uh, which we do every week in the Joy Soul Spa Facebook group, as well as on my YouTube page, which is uh, Joy Giovanni Psychic Medium, and my public Facebook page, which is at Joyful Medium. Uh, today's topic I'm really excited to talk to you about comes from a question that was posted in my private Facebook community, Joy's Soul Spa. You're all invited to join if you're not there already. It is a lovely community with lots of like-minded seekers. I also teach workshops there and do um, lots of fun stuff. So for privacy, because that is a private community, even though, like I said, you're all invited, um, I'm not going to use the person's name who posted the question. But the question that they posted is, are we still married when we cross over to the spirit world? And I thought it was such an incredible question. And one of the things I love about the Joy Soul Spa Facebook group is that there are all these wonderful, beautiful souls who are so supportive and who gave just lovely answers and support to this person who asked this question. Um, they wanted my response and every time I sat down to write the response to this question, are we still married when we're in the spirit world? Uh, the answer was so long that I thought, you know, I'm just gonna make this into a live, uh, into a weekly topic because I know this question is on a lot of people's hearts. Now, for some people, like this person who wrote the post, um, CM are their initials, so I'm just gonna call them that, and they will know that this is for them. Lots of love to you, CM, and thank you for the question. Uh, those of you popping on, if you wanna say hi, say hello to me in the comments, just say your name in there too, drop your name with it, so I know who you are. I can't always see the names um, come up on uh, StreamYard. So, are we still married when we cross over to the spirit world? I think there are a few things to consider here and then I wanna talk a little bit about um, the contract of marriage. So if you're someone like this person who wrote the question, who has lost a partner that you really love and miss and adore, um, you know, we're wanting the answer to be yes, we're still married on the other side. But what if you're someone who lost a partner and that partner was difficult? or abusive, or wasn't the person you wanted to marry and you were in some way required or obligated to marry them. Well, maybe then you're like, am I still married when I cross over? Because I'm hoping for some freedom, right? So I think which way the question, you know, you're hoping leans just depends um, on your situation. Now, there's also more to consider here because marriage, the contract of marriage as we understand it today is ever evolving. So what if you're someone, um, you know, many of you who know me uh, know that I grew up very close within the LGBTQ plus community. What if you're someone who wasn't able to marry the person that you love because perhaps at the time period it was not considered legal by the place that you lived, um, it was not accepted by the faith that you belong to or by the community that you belong to, it was not recognized or it just wasn't permitted for some reason, right? Well then what happens then? Can you still be married to that person when you're on the other side? Um, so let's dive in because I think this is such a delicious question. Hey Kyle, good to see you, um, big hugs. Uh, and also I have a couple announcements I'm gonna say at the end, there's a free live mini reading session this Sunday, so I'll give you details, it's online, totally free. Um, and a free monthly community healing coming up on Tuesday the 14th uh, and an event that I'm gonna post in the chat that you guys can all see that's coming up on Sunday the 19th. Uh, um, which is a live group demonstration, which I'm so excited about. So in order to really evaluate this question, are we still married when we cross over to the spirit world? Are we still married in the spirit world? We first need to look at this construct or contract or institution of marriage. Um, I want to just highlight how this idea of marriage, this union of marriage has really changed throughout the years. Now, uh, really, there was a time, we all know this to be true, it's, it's very documented, um, where in many cultures, societies, communities, the whole purpose of marriage was more of a contract and it was often decided only between men, only between the leaders of the families. Now, 
uh, in ancient times, a long time ago. Perhaps these marriages were arranged or decided upon for protection. Um, you know, maybe you're in one uh, tribe or group and this person is in another tribe or group and we're gonna unify these families through this marriage for greater protection, for more allyship, for more resources, right? Um, and it's not necessarily a marriage of choice. And we know this to be true all the way through the 12th century. It's not until more recent times, even like 16th, 17th century, that marriage is even totally a religious institution and then was handed over to control by governments. Now, Marriage might mean different things to different people based on your spiritual beliefs. Perhaps you belong to a religious community. Um, perhaps you belong to a belief system. Perhaps you live in one country over another. So there are different laws associated with the contract of marriage. And it's not until more recent times within the last, um, you know, couple centuries here that we even understand marriage in a love relationship. It used to be that you would just be assigned to marry someone. Usually the female's family would give a generous amount of either land or property or inheritance. And the woman, the female partner who was being given away, as we say in marriage, wasn't even allowed to own her own inheritance. It all went to the man. And if something were to happen, she was not able to have any ownership rights over anything. That's not that far away, guys, in our history. Now, as we move towards recent times, we know that now people choose to marry, right? Hey, Karen, good to see you. So that sort of begs the question, and as you might imagine, as a medium, I often work with people who have lost a partner to the other side. And sometimes there are feelings of guilt or concern around taking a new partner if it was a positive relationship. And there often are concerns and questions like this around, are we still married when I cross over? Will my partner still be married to me? Because the concern is, as the way that we say it these days, is that uh, until death do us part, but we're still basing all of this, even though love is allowed or um, accepted as a reason to marry now, all of the rules and even the way that the contract is signed for marriage, even the way that we need a government contract to technically make us legally married, um, or for some people they need a, an officiant of a specific religion to, to be recognized as married. We still have so many of these threads of that old way, that contractual exchange with no love, still marinated even in the wording of our ceremonies, um, you know, unless someone chooses to write their own vows or construct their own way that they want the ceremony. The traditional way, as we know, is the woman is walked down some sort of aisle, presented and given to um, traditionally, the male partner, like I was saying, some some other types of relationships weren't even recognized until more recently as marriage legally in the contractual sense of the word. So even in the wording to, to um, you know, love is newly added in there to honor, to obey, right? Uh, so in that sense of the word, from my perspective as a medium and in my work with the spirit world, I don't think that these legally binding contracts exist in the same way on the other side. Here's some more reasons why I think this. I've really, like I said, I've spent a lot of time uh, thinking about this as we, you know, as I've been wanting to answer this question for CM. Good morning to whoever said that. If you say hi, just drop your name in the chat so I know uh, who you are. Um, so when we look at this idea of marriage, right, and of, of choice in marriage, that has just come along more recently, but still there are other things that come with this contractually binding earthly marriage, for example. We are talking about um, physical, like intimate fidelity often, meaning, you know, forsaking all others, right? Um, that's not necessary on the other side because we don't have a physical body that we are worried about physical intimacy or procreation, birth of other humans through our body. So that part wouldn't even apply 
anyway. And these human emotions that are often combined into this marital agreement are things like protection, right? You're agreeing to combine resources. Um, and in case it's not clear, I'm flashing forward to our current version of marriage where um, in the US at least and in many other countries, we are permitted often, most often, to marry by choice, um, often for love. Although I do wanna point out, as we know in other cultures and other countries um, and, and sometimes in cultures within our own country, arranged marriages still exist. And needing permission to marry rather than being able just to marry from choice still exists. So there are lots of human emotions or human complications that we have to evaluate as being attached to this contract of marriage, right? So thinking about what else comes with marriage, division of assets, combining property, that safety and protection to have a partner in life who's helping you to hopefully get a, go along to get along, right? Perhaps you're raising a family together. Perhaps you're building wealth together or purchasing assets like homes or cars um, together. So that is all part of that marriage contract that exists here on earth. Now, I think you already know where I'm going here. In my perspective as a medium, the earthly contract of legally binding marriage, I don't believe continues on or exists on the other side in the spirit world. Um, but before you get upset with me and say, hold on, what if I love my partner? What if I want to be married on the other side? What if I want to see them and know them? Well, that's where the good news comes in. Since when we cross over, we no longer reside in these physical bodies, we no longer reside in this human condition. And what I mean by that is this world is a world of duality, good and evil, happy and sad. Um, on the other side, I don't think we're subject to struggle and strife and jealousy and difficult emotions in the way that we are on this side. However, what we do have on the other side is a much higher level or a much more pure version of that love. So while a human relationship here, a love relationship, let's just say, or a marriage here on this side in the physical world, in our world, while that is um, even in the best case scenario, when you chose your partner and you love them deeply and it's a beautiful relationship, we have some expectations of that person, right? Um, perhaps fidelity is an expectation like we were talking about, but maybe it's just the division of labor at home. Maybe it's just that you expect them to speak respectfully. You expect them to treat you a certain way even when you guys don't agree. You expect them not to lash out in anger. Those things are all totally unnecessary on the other side because that purest, highest version of love that we experience when we're not um, consumed by or challenged by these difficult human emotions, the love that we have on the other side is so much more pure. So just think about a version of that love in that perfect marital relationship, which we know there's perfect doesn't exist on this side, but that, that love where you truly see the person entirely and completely. Because even if someone is your very best friend in the whole world, and I wish for all of you that your life partner can be your very best friend and closest confidant in the whole world, but even in the best scenario, we all in our human form, we have private thoughts, we have a private life, we have private emotions that we don't necessarily share every bit of every feeling or every emotion or every frustration with our person. And on the other side, that's all stripped away. So we don't have this private part of ourselves that can't truly be 100% known. We do, on a soul to soul level, completely know, see, love, accept each other. Now, particularly um, for some of my clients, uh, you know who you are, and for CM who wrote this original post that I'm responding to, do we see and know each other on the other side? Absolutely. And I'm gonna give you some examples from the original poster's um, comment. Now, 
a while back, if you're in the Joy Soul Spa private Facebook community, you know that sometimes I'll pop in there and do we'll do group readings and I'll do mini readings. In a group reading, as I was thinking about this, um, all of these memories came back to me. I don't often remember mediumship readings after the fact. I'm in a different state as we talk about. It's a mystical experience. I don't often know that person. Usually I don't know them at all. I'm learning about them as I go. And I often forget most of the information. And this reading was quite some time ago. Um, I feel like at the, at the earliest it might have been last summer, but I think it's uh, beyond that. So CM, let me know if you see this video. This person's partner shows them signs all the time. And the partner who's in the spirit world was communicating, hey, when they're in my truck, I play songs on the radio. And CM knew exactly what I was talking about and did know what those songs were and was having the experience of their partner who has passed away and crossed over to the other side, making effort and showing them in signs in the world that they are still with them, which from a mediumship perspective, it's not just the detail of, oh, you still have my vehicle, you still sit in there in the driveway, you still drive it around, even though you never did before, I play these songs for you. It's more than that. It's, I know who I am from the other side and I have all my memories is what the partner was actually, you know, part of what they're communicating. I know who you are. I know that you miss me. I know that you still love me and I still love you. I want to validate for you that I am still with you just in another way. And also through this reading, this person's partner who had crossed over was able to validate several things that they were feeling, experiencing, going through in their day to day life. It's one of my favorite things about mediumship, um, evidential mediumship specifically, which if you are uh, loving the Joy Soul Spa Facebook group, you will love the Spirit Speakeasy podcast. My topic this week was how to get the most from your reading, but we also uh, dove into things like how do they find me? How do they know where I am? They still do know who they are. They know who you are. They know how you feel. And while the contract of marriage, right, that legally binding uh, paperwork that we file with some government organization to prove that we are, you know, attached to this person or bound to this person legally, that gives us rights like insurance, partner's rights, the ability to be in the hospital room when they are having, you know, challenges medically, it allows us to be next of kin. All of these things are so important on our side, on this earthly plane in our, in our world, right? On the other side, it's the love that connects us. It's the love that um, creates a blessed union of souls. So does that love continue on? 100% absolutely. And what if you had a situation where, for whatever reason, whether you are someone who's from the Middle Ages and was assigned to marry and didn't get to marry your love, or whether you lived in the 80s or 90s in the US and your partnership wasn't legally recognized as marriage, the love is what matters. That love continues on in its purest, highest, most beautiful form that is so beyond our human uh, ability to conceive. That is what we still have access to. So CM, who asked the original question, um, Kyle says, love listening to you about this because I completely agree with you. Big hugs. I'm, I'm glad that this resonates with you and, and, and with so many of you, whether you've lost a partner or know someone else that's lost a partner to the spirit world. Um, you know, this, this love that is really the foundation of these relationships, even when in our human selves, we're messy, right? Our relationships are messy and complicated and imperfect and we make mistakes and we, um, you know, harbor resentment and we don't always ask forgiveness and we do all, all this messy stuff on this side. None of that is a part of the other side. So like I was saying, what if you're someone whose partnership wasn't recognized or who didn't get to marry the person that they truly loved and wanted to have partnership with in this world. You still get to have that love and that experience um, in the emotion on the other side. I don't know if you guys can hear the weather. It is crazy and raining and windy here. So if I, if I keep looking over there, my window's over there. Um, 
that is what's happening. Uh, so while the contract of, of legally binding marriage doesn't exist on the other side, the wisdom and love of our soul knows who we are bound to, who we want to be with. And for CM who asked the original question, are we still married on the other side? It doesn't mean just because you're not in an earthly human way legally bound in contractual marriage by a government, you still get to be with that person's soul on the other side. You still get to choose to have soul adventures with them. And whether that's going to other dimensions and other places, uh, that's an option. Whether it's perhaps reincarnating in a different lifetime in similar or different relationships. Um, uh, I, let me see this question. Um, Joshua says, I'm looking for an example long-term relationship. I don't know what you mean. The question that I'm answering, I think you might have just popped on, is are our people, our humans, when we cross over to the spirit world, are we still married? And the question was from someone who lost their beloved partner uh, who is on the other side in the spirit world now, and they're wondering, when I cross over, are we still going to be married? Um, so the love is still there in a much more pure and powerful way. And of course, they're still going to choose you. And the truth is, if you married them here on earth, if you guys found each other and came together and had a union of marriage, um, you know, uh, chances are that they might be part of your soul family. And what that means is it's my belief system and the belief of many mediums and many other people that we have so other souls on the other side that we come back to earth with different times and play different roles. So while you might have been married in this lifetime, perhaps in another lifetime, you might be best friends, you might be siblings, you might be um, parent and child, you might be married again. One of you might stay on that side, one go round, and one of you might incarnate and might be your guide on the other side. So there is so much more to this. You see why I couldn't answer this in just the comments of a of a question and a post. Um, I really wanted to give it the energy and the time that this question begs for because it's an amazing question. So thank you, CM, for giving us this um, food for conversation, if you will. But there, there's so much more to this than our finite, limited human understanding can even really fully process. Uh, so if you had a challenged relationship with someone, because I know some people whose partner crosses over, they had a difficult relationship and they're hoping to not have to be with that person. They're not the same version of themselves when they cross over. So I know we've talked about this before, but things like, addiction or mental health challenges or challenges with difficult emotions like anger, um, abusive emotions, that is all healed. It's not a part of the soul. It's a part of their human experience. Uh, that is all healed and worked through on the other side. It's why often in readings, someone that we had a challenged or difficult relationship will come uh, communicate and will express Hey, I didn't realize what I did. I didn't realize how I made you feel. I'm so sorry. I understand now. And we'll often share details to really communicate that they do fully understand in a way that they weren't capable of in their human form for one way or another. So it doesn't mean you're bound to that person in that you are indebted to them in some way, but your souls have an understanding with each other. And you will get to see them again, but you also could choose to not have adventures with someone if you didn't want to. So in a technical way to answer the original question, love to see them again, so much love to you. Um, are we still married when we cross over? I wanna say no, not in the earthly, legally binding contract where one person is given to another or even in a love situation where we agree through some legally binding contract. Um, I don't believe that that human contract still exists in the same way in the spirit world. However, my belief is love trumps all. Love is the most important emotion. It's the most important force. And it's so much more beyond just a romantic love. It is a deep, pure, overwhelming love. That is something that, you know, we rarely get to even experience in human form. Sometimes people will say they experience it through 
religion, sometimes through profound relationships, sometimes through uh, near-death experiences or out-of-body experiences or spiritual experiences. It's, it's available to us, but not quite in the same way that it is on the spirit side because we don't have all these earthly complications over there. So imagine the most perfect relationship where we don't have to pay bills and worry about shelter and worry about survival and worry about jealousy and worry about none of that is part of the spirit world. So that is why our relationships can be so much more pure, so much more soul connected and so much different and more profound on the other side. So while this earthly contract of marriage, um, I don't believe exists in the same way, the love carries on in an exponentially greater and more profound way. And like I was saying with this person who asked the original question, are we still married on the other side? Their loved one has communicated in a group reading setting and share details, evidence is what we call it in evidential mediumship, and validation that they are still present with them from the spirit world and still know what's going on and are still trying to infuse love into your life and show that they are still there, they're still present, they still understand who you are, they still understand who they are, they still deeply love and care about you, regardless of whether they are on the other side or not. So I hope that answers a question. I love when you guys post questions like this. Um, so thank you so much for the question. It's so common of a question. And like I said, I do have lots of clients who have lost a marriage partner or a love partner or a romantic partner um, who's on the other side now who want to know this. So thank you so much for bringing the question that lets the conversation happen. I'm going to tell you about this free mini reading event. Let me check comments. Um, I can't read your name, K. Das, but uh, says, I'm Hindu and I do believe in reincarnation. Lovely. Um, Kyle says, agree, we all want love. Yes, we all want love, but remember, love comes in many forms and sometimes recognizing the forms that it does come in opens us for more forms of love to experience, right? Um, Joshua says, looking for an opportunity to be in a relationship with, with me. Well, um, I don't know that that's possible because I'm not in a relationship or looking for one right now. I am being with myself, but thanks for the love and I wish you love and I hope you find the right person for you. Uh, hearts to whoever that is with what looks like a baby rhino. If you say hi, just say your name. Let's talk about these free events that are coming up. Friend of the Spirit Speakeasy podcast, Carolyn Wilkins, and I are going to be doing a couple of events coming up. So Sunday, this Sunday, uh, which is March 5th, I want to say. I swear I look at these dates every time before I pop on and then forget. Sunday, March 5th at 11 a.m. Pacific, which is uh, 11, 12, 1, 2 p.m. Eastern and 7 p.m. UK. This Sunday, March 5th, we're going to be live just like this. So wherever you're watching this right now, we will be live exactly like this, taking requests for messages. Now, we're not doing messages from the spirit world. We're just doing psychic messages. Um, um, but it's totally free and all you have to do is be live with us this Sunday, March 5th, right here, wherever you are now, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. UK, and we're going to be giving some messages. Uh, we will be doing mediumship messages. I'm going to drop this link in the comments right now at our live event that is coming up on Sunday, March 19th, which I'm so excited about. Spring Forward with Spirit. I just dropped the link in the comments. If you are on my Instagram page, you can also see it as link in bio, and I've been posting on Facebook about it, so check there as well. Um, we are selling tickets for this event. However, we're gonna be doing mediumship. So it's, again, Carolyn and I, my dear friend and colleague who I'm so excited. Uh, we've known each other and worked together as mediums for many years, but I believe this is the first event that we're doing together where we're going to be doing it's called gallery reading so everyone who's in attendance we're going to be working mediumistically and several people who attend will get messages and details from loved ones in the spirit world so there's a link I just popped it in the comments that's going to be Sunday March 19th that is similar time so noon Pacific which is 3 p.m. Eastern and 8 p.m. UK trying to make it so everyone can attend 
We've also got the free monthly community healing, which if you're a member of my Joy Soul, Joy's Soul Spa Facebook community, which again is totally free, I put posts there, giving the link. Um, that is gonna be Tuesday, March 14th, and I usually do those around 5 p.m. Pacific, which is 8 p.m. Eastern. If you are on my VIP insiders email list, um, just go to my website, joyfulmedium.com. I've got a free signs course. If you haven't taken that yet, it will teach you how to get signs from your loved ones in the spirit world, signs from the universe. And if you see recurring numbers as signs, 1111, 444, 777, it's gonna teach you what all those numbers mean and what they're trying to tell you. Um, you don't have to take the course, but it's free if you want to. And dropping your email in there gets you on my VIP insiders list and you will get the link for the free monthly community healing. We usually have about 30 or so people there. All are welcome. It's totally free. All you're uh, needing to do is just come, sit, relax, and receive. And again, that's going to be Tuesday, the 14th of March um, at 5 p.m. Pacific, which is 8 p.m. Eastern. So look for the posts about that. You'll be getting an email about it if you're on my list. Let me know if you have other questions about the spirit world. CM asked an amazing question in the Joy Soul Spa group. Are we still married when we cross over to the spirit world? And I hope that this topic and my little chat about it today has given you some food for thought. I hope that um, you know, we don't have all the answers, of course. We will have much more understanding someday when we're on the other side. Uh, but I hope that this has just started to help you evaluate and evaluate the difference between what we do on this side and how we might feel on the other side. If you have other questions, I'd love to hear them. I'm always looking for topics for the Spirit Speakeasy podcast. And if you like these live chats with me, you will love uh, the private chats between us in the Spirit Speakeasy. I do every other week interviews and then one-on-one -on -one intimate chat with just you and me. Uh, you can find the Spirit Speakeasy podcast on iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. And I also post a video version of it on my website, joyfulmedium.com, under the blog section, even though it's kind of more of a vlog with the video. But you know, uh, so big hugs, lots of love. Let me know how this resonated with you and your thoughts and feelings. Uh, remember, it's the love that matters. It's the love that connects us. And uh, it's the love that our souls share, not dependent on contracts and legal agreements that we make with governments and organizations um, or societies here on this earth side. So lots of love, big hugs. Thank you, Kyle, for the big hug. Thanks for being with me today. Uh, I hope you are staying safe and dry and I'm wishing you lots of love always. Um, love listening to this chat today. Thank you, I think I know who that is. I think, uh, I think I know who that is. Big hugs, guys. Talk to you soon. And I hope to see you at Sunday's free event or the event on the 19th so you can experience some mediumship yourself. Talk to you soon. Bye.